just sat as a third speaker is listening to everybody else and getting really engrossed in what they said. I love the trough of disillusionment. Um, and what I'd like to do for the next 10 minutes is just shift the focus from, away from artificial intelligence into emotional intelligence and look at the human side of tech. Because we've already established from what Jane and Alina mentioned, there is a human factor. And I think that's really poignant in organizations that bring in tech to already established sales units. Because salespeople are a funny bunch, and we all know that. Um, and trying to work with them and <coughs> supply tools to them can be quite a challenging process as some of you will have faced. Every salesperson knows that a pipeline is critical to the lifeblood of the organization and to close business. When salespeople are new, generally they have a lot of uh, potential and they spend a lot of time nurturing that pipeline. As they become more established, their closure rate increases, so they focus less on the pipeline. As they become the lone wolf strategic salesperson who knows everything um, and manages themselves and would do a lot better without everybody around them, they tend to neglect the pipeline. So there are some real challenges within there. Last Thursday, I had a commercial director say to me, separate from this event, say to me that only 10% of his sales team use their CRM process. His words to me were that it was a waste of an asset. Now, I was pleased that he said it was a waste of an asset rather than a waste of money because the tech wasn't the problem. The people were the challenge. So what I'd like to do is share three diagnostic questions that you can ask to think, are your people ready? Technology is really interesting how it has uh, shaped and moved. And unfortunately, as a salesperson myself, historically, I know only too well that salespeople are liars. Okay. Because if you ask them what they need to make their sales improve, they will give you a whole range of solutions. They will say the Google AI call assistant, give me that and we will smash our targets. And you will spend a load of money on that and they won't smash the targets. That's the reality. It really came home to me when I did some field work with a company that sells um, TV entertainment into pubs and clubs. You will probably have it in your home. Very good for sports packages. Yeah, it's sometimes called blue something, sky. And I was out in the field with them, and I used to work in the pub trade, so I was really interested in seeing how technology had moved on, because I used to have an A4 binder with 500 pages of a spreadsheet database that had 5,000 licensed premises in Manchester that I had to trawl through alongside my yellow pages and my A to Z. And I was really excited to see how things had changed. And uh, I worked with this young guy, Steve, met him at Starbucks, talked about the day, showed me his technology. He had the best piece of kit that I had ever seen. It had everything that every salesperson had ever asked for. It had 4G connectivity, it had Google Maps, it had um, their CRM system, it had all of the presentation material, etc., etc. Come 12 o'clock when we drove to three different places and nobody had been in. We then reached the fourth destination where we'd been driving up and down Eccles Old Road for 20 minutes trying to find a pub that was actually um, a pile of rubble. And I said, Steve, why have we just wasted so much time when you could have done a simple Google search to find out whether that new potential prospect was there or not? Well, Steve wasn't a technophobe, but he just hadn't made those connections. He'd just been stuck in a pattern of behavior, probably learned from some of the more senior people who had trained him, but stuck in a pattern of behavior that wasn't allowing him to make the most of that technology. Technology wasn't at fault, people were at fault. I'm going to ask for a show of hands, does anybody here have experience, either in your current org organisations or past, where there's some amazing cool technology, CRM systems, etc., but it's not fully utilised? As a show of hands, there's a few, yeah, wow, well, probably more than half of you. Um, on a more serious note, are there anybody here that's experienced animosity or conflict or debate with the sales team or the commercial team to say, this CRM system isn't very good, is it? Does anybody have that? <laughs> yeah, it's not a nice place to be. The reality, the greatest sales teams on the planet will have great people and they will have the greatest technology <coughs> working hand in hand. That's what we're aspiring to here. So I've got three diagnostic questions that you can ask to help yourself to understand, are your people ready to take on board that technology? The first question as a diagnosis is, with the current process to nurture and build that pipeline, do they have the skill and the will to do that process as it is currently, rather than 
in the future with the additional tech. If your sales team have the skill, they're currently nurturing a the pipeline, they're establishing prospects, etc. They've got the will as well, it is part of their ingrained sales habits. Fantastic, buy that tech because it's going to give you a massive edge. Get all of the buying, get the leadership buying that we've already heard as well, and allow that to come part of business as usual. If your team don't have the skill, but they have the will, train them up to get that skill and allow them to understand and recognize the value in nurturing that pipeline and then buy the technology to make it even better. This is the challenge. Apologies, the will should come up on the right side of the, of the uh, text. When they have the skill to do it, maybe they used to do it, but now they don't have the will or the motivation. For whatever reason, it's beneath them, they haven't got the time, etc., etc. Because then you've got a person problem or a people problem or a group problem that is in here. If they haven't got the skill or the will to nurture a pipeline and build a pipeline, then maybe you've made a bum recruitment decision. Maybe they should be in a different part of the organisation. But let's look at it a little bit more closely to say, if they haven't got the will, what do we do? As sales leaders and business leaders, you need to think, can I change their mindset? Because they're not nurturing the pipeline, they're not making the call, they're not doing that pre-work. It is something in here that is getting in the way. As leaders, one option is just to tell them to do it. And we all know that that doesn't always work. Anybody who's got kids knows that that doesn't work. We use the process think, feel, do. We want people to change. We want people to do things that are different to what they're currently doing. Where that starts in is how people think. Because how people th think leads to what they feel, leads to what they do. My wife is a behavioural therapist and she deals with people at the extreme ends of phobias. So spiders, for instance, and flying, etc. Already it's been mentioned technophobe. Technophobia is a, is a real phobia, a real irrational fear. Now when it comes to spiders in the house, I'm six foot two, but I am not the spider catcher. My wife, she is a spider catcher. And we've got kids and they've learned to be scared of spiders because I don't like spiders. My wife will say to me, just pick up the damn spider, you big softy. And I'll say, no, because I don't like it. Um, and she knows that with behavioural therapy, you have to address what goes on in here. So when I say to her, Sue, you know that you just can't tell me to change. It's an irrational fear. It's deep-seated. It comes from when I was a child. Please do not tell me to do something like that. You have to help me change my mindset. She says, no. I said, well, you wouldn't do that with your clients, would you? She says, no, because you're not paying me £100 a session. <laughs> That's why I won't do it with you. I'll just tell you to do it. And how often does that help, um, happen as sales leaders and business leaders? We don't address the mindset. We just tell people to change. Telling people to change if it is a deep-seated technophobia or other reason or excuse that is behind there is unlikely to change. You may get people nodding and saying, yeah, 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 no problem, and then not doing, or you might get um, outright conflict. To be able to do this, you need the leaders to be able to have the skill of coaching as part of their arsenal of leadership. Because if it's just tell, it just doesn't always work. So think, feel, do. But the question now at the top is, can I change their mindset? I don't believe that any individual can change somebody else's mindset. I only believe we can influence it and allow that person to change themselves. And sometimes it's relatively quick and easy, and sometimes it can take years. But if somebody does not want to change, they do not want to change. So it cannot be forced. But coaching as a leader is your best asset to allow that conversation, to allow that growth for the individual, to allow them to change so that they do want to do. And then the third question of the diagnostic is how can I make this habitual? Is nurturing pipeline in my organisation a habitual part of business as usual for my salespeople? Or are they too busy going off and doing all the closure of business? If it's not habitual now, it is likely that it's going to become very difficult to make it habitual. So look at the habits that your salespeople have got. Get the buy-in that we've already heard about. Get the sales leaders involved. But more importantly, get the influential salespeople within the teams involved as well, because they can have a very loud voice. Get the tech. 
get the champions on board, make it business as usual over a period of time, find the bright spots, find the people who are really smashing it and celebrate that, celebrate that success. Allow for the trough of disillusionment, maybe signpost it up front. But then, as a leader, don't take your eyes off it. The moment you take your eyes off any part of the business, whether it's CRM, whether it's nurturing the pipeline, your team will also take their eyes off it. Because your team will respect what you inspect. So you need to have those conversations. You need to send those emails. You need to celebrate those successes. You need to ask those questions of the team. Say, how are you using it? What's going well? What's not going well? Etc. 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 So, the emotional side, the people buy-in is critical to making tech happen. So before you buy the tech, think about how you integrate it, particularly focusing on the change and trust. The three diagnostic questions, is it skill or is it will? If it's will, can you change their mindset? If you can change their mindset, can you make it habitual? Sales is the lifeblood of every single organisation. Without it, your organisation stops. Sales doesn't happen without nurturing a pipeline. If you stop nurturing your pipeline, you are predicting a dip in your cash flow. So take the time to get the emotion intelligence as a leader married with the artificial intelligence as a tech, and you'll be smashing it. Thank you.